He's Nate Bauer. I'm Greg Pickle. We are from Blue White Illustrated, and we are talking from the field at Beaver Stadium. Nate, we just finished interviews at Media Day. A lot to learn for Penn State fans. A lot to learn for us about this 2021 team. And the good news is, is we had a lot of time to ask and hear answers to questions. Yeah, I'm trying to get my head uh, around everything. Right. I mean, it's just it's such a mad rush it is. Uh, to just get as much as you possibly can. Uh, I think that we both came away feeling. Um, you know, like we got decent, decent interviews with people. Uh, yep. Uh, 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 read on the quarterbacks, take on Rock Roberson. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the running backs and how crowded that room is, and you know, kind of the approach that they're taking to, uh, you know, to, to the season ahead. So yeah. it's, um, you know, it's it was an interesting day, and we'll uh, we'll go from there. What were your main takeaways? Yeah. So when you look at the website over the days to come, is Joe Herman who got Walker in our shot. Thank you, Joe. Um, oh, Joe. When you look at the website, bwi.rivals.com, over the next handful of days, weeks, you're going to see so many stories from Nate, from me, from David Eckert, from Ryan Snyder, because there were so much, so many things to talk about and so many people worth talking to. And that's not to say that that's not the case every year. But this year, you know, you have so many positions that are up for grabs that you don't know who the star is going to be and you want to try and talk to all of them. So that's one thing that kind of struck me here is that when you walked around the field to different position groups, Sometimes you say, oh, yeah, I got to get that guy and that guy. And in this case, it could have been that guy, that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy. So that's one thing. Obviously, the big news of the day, Adisa Isaac, not going to be available for some period of time. Sounds like a substan- I believe the word was substantial amount of time. Could be the whole season. For the season. Yeah. So at this point, obviously, Penn State not expecting to have him. Definitely a blow to a defensive end group that is young and inexperienced to begin with. No question. But, you know, they already uh, – felt pretty good, I think, about Nick Tarburton. Yep. Um, you know, and, and that was a position that needed new faces to contribute anyway, right? Uh, you lose uh, uh, Owe and you lose Shaka Tony. Yep. You know, somebody has to step forward. And so, yeah, you're banking on Adisa Isaac at the beginning, but uh, it didn't matter even if Adisa was playing. They were still going to need depth at that position. They were still going to need contributions uh, that they haven't had previously. Yeah, I mean, I, I think what, what you were saying just a minute ago about you know, you didn't have to talk to the stars right. at this media day because, you, yeah, we know who the stars are, but there are so many more players who don't have currently that star right. status yep. who, if Penn State is going to be the program that it wants to be and that it thinks it can be this season, there's guys that, that have not yet stepped to the forefront that yep. are absolutely going to have to do that this season. Um, you know, it's just a matter of, of stepping forward and doing it. Yep, you don't beat Wisconsin if that doesn't happen. You're not going to do well against Auburn here at home if that doesn't happen. Same thing later in the year of Michigan, Iowa trip, Ohio State trip, etc. 100%. Yep. So, uh, a couple other things that jumped out at me. J1 Sider said Noah Kane looks great. Said he's 100%. Noah later saying, and I think you got a chance to talk to him. I chatted with him very briefly, but said he just needs to get hit at this point. He needs to have that feeling of what it feels like to take a tackle because he's done the rehab, he's done the running on air and all of that, the seven on sevens, the hail runs that we saw on social media, but he has yet to take his first hit since going down on what, the third play at Indiana last year, so that's where he's at right now. He'll get that chance. He certainly will, (laughs) yes, and he said he's looking forward to it, so that's what you want in a football player, of course, the willingness to get tackled at any point in time. Um, And yeah, from there, I mean, I think back over the day, Mike Yurcich has a lot of energy, man. I don't know how much time you got to talk to him, but that guy has more energy than, I mean, Ricky Ronnie was kind of energetic in his own way. Kurt Scirocco was a quietly energetic guy, I think. Obviously, Joe Moorhead was a talker. Um, but, man, it just, it, it comes out of his pores, really, yeah, Mike right. Yurcich. The, the energy and the excitement and really the belief in himself in a non-arrogant way, but just in a way that this is what works and this is what we're going to do. Yeah. No, he's, he reminds me of... Uh the Will Ferrell SNL character who is the la- he doesn't know the volume of his voice right and but that's it's just energy it's just enthusiasm yep. he's excited about it um, and and more than him being excited about it he wants to project to those around him yes. how excited he is about it and you know I think that this is a program at this moment right now that needs that and I think that James Franklin recognized that um, you know and that's a big reason why he's here right now. So we're going to get to see practice a little bit later. I guess let's get some final thoughts here. He's Nate Bauer. I'm Greg Pickle. Blue White Illustrated, bwi.rivals.com. All the latest news, notes, recruiting, insight, and more. I guess as we get ready to go right, you know, we're taping this. I think it's about 3 o'clock on Saturday, August 7th. Um, As we get ready to go right and then go to practice, the one thing that jumped out to me talking to, I'm not going to rattle them all off, but Joey Porter Jr., 
uh, John Lovett, Eric Wilson, Arnold Abichetti. I'm second with Derek Tangelo, a couple other ones. I mean, they just feel like Nick Tarbert. They just feel like there's something different about this team. And look, we hear that every media day, right? It's closer. It's yeah. it's bonding better. It's this. It's that. It's the other thing. But the difference to me is that these guys have to believe it and they have to do it because they didn't really do it last year. And I think they all realize that. And there's this common spirit, I guess, if you will. And that's the right way to put it. But yeah. I, I just picked up that they believe in each other they believe in themselves and they realize the things they were doing last year that weren't togetherness that weren't teamwork no doubt it ain't gonna happen it's not gonna work it's not gonna fly this year yeah and and um you know last last year look every single year every single team all across the country has a chip on their shoulder oh yeah and no one's ever had a bad first day at camp let me promise you that too ever uh but there's a genuineness to it this year there's, yeah. I mean, there's no question like they yep. were embarrassed last year and with uh, good reason. Exactly. Um, you know, they did not play to the expectations that they had coming into the year. Yep. Uh, and, and I don't think that they felt as though they had dealt with the things that came up, right? The yep. adversity that happened. Or adversity is such an overused word, but truly last year it was. I mean, every sense of the word was yes. uh, the way that this program uh, you know, navigated COVID, the injuries that it sustained, uh, and the nature, uh, obviously, of Jerry Brown's. Uh, of course. So, yep. you know, when you have all of that happen, you're able to stick together, uh, you know, and, and yep. kind of keep the ship afloat. They, they could have lost all nine games last year. Sure. They could have stopped playing right. last year. Yep. Uh, you know, those were things that were, in any other context, is completely unheard of and completely unthinkable. Right. But very legitimately, they could have all gotten Absolutely. COVID and not played another game right. uh, after after the fifth week. So yep. the fact that they were able to do that, push through it, it gave them a sense of perspective. That's that of all the themes yep. uh, of everybody that I talked to today, uh, maturity, growing up, you know, perspective, all of those things were were a theme. Yep. Like that was something that literally every single one of those guys had something to say about it. Um, and so, you know, when you have that maturity or you think that you have that maturity, it, it really can kind of set the tone and the aura yeah. of the way that the program operates. So that's it's it's going to be interesting to see because, again, like these are the themes of just about every preseason. Right. Sometimes uh, it, it clicks and sometimes it actually happens on the field because that's that's the bottom line here is they have to do it. Right. Uh, and the reality going into 2016 it was very similar. Yes, absolutely. Right, a bad coming off a bad season yep. for Penn State standards. Not what they wanted to do. New offensive coordinator, new environment, uh, and and a lot of unprovenness yep. out there. Absolutely, I don't think that's a word. It is now. Okay, we've made it one today. <laughs> All right. Well, you're going to want to check practice number two is later today inside the Blue White Illustrated Lions Den Premium Forum. We'll have updates, news, notes, analysis from practice. Obviously, bwi.rivals.com will have the latest news from media day. Stay tuned. Camp season is here. Before we know it, it will be September 4th at Wisconsin. And then it will be September 11th, and everyone watching will be able to be back inside Beaver Stadium, just like we're back on the field for the first time doing this video since 2019. I hope so. Yes, me and you both. We'll catch, yeah, go ahead. Yes, it was. We'll catch you next time. <laughs>